Hey everyone, welcome to my video on Java singletons where I'm going to be going over eager initialization, lazy initialization, thread safe lazy initialization, double check locking, build pew singleton implementation, and also singleton by using enum. So the purpose of this singleton is to control object creation, specifically limiting the number of objects to only one, so only one object being created. And so in other words, it controls access to a shared resource. A specific example is if any of you have ever used um, Facebook login with Android or using the Facebook API, there's a login manager and that's used to manage logging in. You only want one login manager because it's basically only you logging in, so why have multiple objects? And so it contains the permissions for you logging in and you only need one. And you can usually recognize the singleton pattern or the design pattern by if a class has a static method called get instance. So if you do the class name dot get instance, that is usually a singleton pattern. And so before I dive deeper into a singleton though, I want to go over reference variables as that'll really clear up what or help you with understanding what a singleton is. So I've pulled up a PowerPoint slide now to give you a better visualization of what a reference variable really is. But so a reference variable is a variable that refers to something else, and this something else being an object. So right here we have two reference variables. We have person1 and we have person2. And then you can see over here what they're referring to is a new person object. So this new operator here for new person is what actually creates the object. We are creating two objects. We are creating one called Tom and one called Greg. And you can see right here person1 refers to Tom, person2 refers to Greg. And now, however, if we assign, say we say person1 equals person2, now this object is still here until it gets collected by the Java Virtual Machine uh, garbage collector, but person1 is now pointing to per what person2 points to, or Greg, who's age 22. And so the reason I'm showing you this about singletons is, for example, say we want to do person1.setAge to 67. Because they're both referring to this object here, the age will be 67 for person1 and person2. And so now if we do person2.setAge to 89, you can see the age is now 89 for this variable as well. So if we did person1.getAge, it would be 89, and person2.getAge, it would be 89, because they both refer to the same object. All right, so now I'm back on IntelliJ, and you can see that over here, I have basically made a class and a demo class for each of the methods of singleton initialization. So you can see we have build pew, eager, enum, lazy, and thread safety lazy. So I'm going to be going each of those. And so the first one I'm going to be starting with is eager initialization. And so one of the things with singleton classes is each singleton class has a private constructor. So you will do private and then the name of the class. So what the point of this is, is basically if you have a private constructor, it means no instances of this class can be made anywhere but within this class, so within these two brackets. So if I go into, say, eager initialization demo, and let's say I type in main to run this, and I do eager initialization, do that, equals new, eager. You can see that it's highlighted in red, and if you look why, it's because it has private access. So the only place we can actually make an object of eager initialization is within here. And now for eager initialization, the first thing that we're going to do is you're going to create a variable, and you're going to call it private static eager initialization, and let's just call it instance equals new eager initialization. And this is the reason why this is called um, eager initialization as opposed to lazy, because you are creating the object when the class is created. So as soon as this class is loaded by Java, this object is created. And now what you need to do, as this is a private variable, we need some way to access it from, say, for example, from the eager initialization demo class. And so to do this, we're going to make the method public, and we'll also name it static, and it returns an eager initialization, because this returns the only object of this class, which is this one up here. And so then we will do, usually by default, you call it get instance, and then you just return the instance of this class that you made. So this is the only class that is made by that, and partly because, of course, we have this constructor that's private. So now if you want to actually use this variable, because it's a static method, you do eager initialization dot get instance. And this will return the only instance of this class. And now let me show you why I showed you that small presentation on reference variables. Because if you create, so you have two instances of this. If I want to create another instance, say eager initialization, let's name it eager initialization2, and I do the same thing, dot get instance. This is referring to the same object, because you've only created one, and it's this one right here. You're not creating one from a constructor, which is what you usually do when you create an object. And so a way to actually show this is I can print out a two string of each of them, and they should be equal. So now let me run it over here, run for main, and you can see from here, from the two string, which is the class name, an at symbol, and a hash, you can see that they are basically referring to the same object, so there are not two objects created. 
And so what this means also from the PowerPoint slide is anything I do to eager initialization two, well, the same thing will happen to eager initialization here because they're both referring to the same object. So for example, if I did set age for this variable, the age would also change for this variable. So now we're gonna get into lazy initialization. And so you'll see why it's called eager and why this is called lazy in a second. But so I've closed down the eager classes and now I've opened up the lazy ones down here. And so of course, the first thing that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating a private constructor so that this is the only place that we can actually create a variable or create an object of this class. And so basically the purpose of lazy initialization is to create an object only when it is needed. So if I pull up eager initialization again, you can see as soon as the class is made or the class is loaded into memory, basically you can see we have the object created here. Whereas with lazy initialization, to avoid this, you create the object within a method. So when that method is called, the object is actually created and not when just the class is called. And so to do this, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create another instance variable of the class. I'm gonna call it private lazy initialization and we can just call it instance. And of course it has to be static because it's gonna be a member of the class. And then next, this is where the object would actually be created. So we're gonna do public static lazy initialization, get instance again, and then we will just do return instance. And now what we're gonna be doing is we have to check first if, if the instance is null. So if the instance is null or the object hasn't created, then we're gonna do um, instance equals new lazy initialization. So we create a new object, and then if not, we just return the instance. So basically what this is saying is check if the object is created, if not, create it, and otherwise just return the object that has already been created, so this one instance of this class. And so I also just want to show you real quick that if you want to create the lazy initialization again, so it's basically the exact same way that you would create it in eager initialization. So you would just do, say, lazy initialization, lazy equals new, or equals lazy initialization dot get instance. And so the pros of this are basically that the object is created only if needed, which is unlike an eager initialization. And this may overcome some resource usage and some CPU time wastage. But however, something you should notice is that in a multi-threaded environment, this is dangerous. So imagine there are two threads attempting to obtain, obtain an object, a reference to this object through the get instant method. If one thread is stopped after executing the line at instance equals null, and then the other thread starts, um, but before the new object is actually created, then you can create more than one object. And this is bad if your single class classes, say, for example, connecting to a database or a remote server. And so there is actually a very simple fix to this issue, and it's just through the keyword synchronized. So you could put that in the method header. So say I do synchronize, now it's public, synchronized static, lazy initialization, and get instance. And what basically this means is that multiple threads can't access it simultaneously. So in other words, only one thread can be executing this method at the same time. So then you don't have to worry about both threads believing the object is null, and then creating two instances when you only want one. However, you should notice that using the synchronized keyword is actually causes slow performance as multiple threads cannot access it simultaneously. And so you don't want that, you want to your programs to be as efficient as possible. And so now I'm gonna show you the way to, do, to get around this. And so the way to get around this overhead associated with a synchronized method is using double check locking. And so you can see I've created a method here called, or a class here called double check lock. And basically why this is more efficient is comes from the word double in it. So the double check comes from the fact that we are checking if the object is null two times. And if the object is null for the first time, then we go into this a synchronized block. And if not, we get to skip it and just return the instance. So instead of the thread stopping for the method every time, they will only stop in that one synchronized block of code. Now, this will make a lot more sense when I'm showing you the code. So let me do that real quick. So the first thing, of course, we need to create a constructor. So call it private double check lock, just so the objects can only be created here. And then we, of course, we need an instance of this class and we're gonna call it double check lock instance just leave it at null for now and then of course you have to make it static and so you can see we're still doing this is still technically lazy initialization because we see we're not if it was eager what we would do is we would do new double check but that of course also uses more resources because when we create the class say we create the class but we don't actually need the object as of now so it'll save us resources so still just keep it here as null and now of course we're going to have our method for actually retrieving this instance and we're going to call it public static because we want it to be accessed from the class it returns a double the double check lock object that we created and then we're just going to call it get instance again 
And so here's the first, so this is the first part of the double. This is the first time checking if the object is null. So we're going to do instance equals null and leave it like this for now. But so this is the first check to see whether the object is null. And so if this instance is null, this basically what it means is it's the first time that we're actually calling this method because the object hasn't created yet. And this is when we should use the synchronized keyword. And when you use it like this, what, we, what you want to do is you want to use the class name. So you have double check lock and you do double check lock dot class. And so what this basically means, this pocket code here, is used to make static data thread safe. So this right here, this is static data of this class, and we want to make it thread safe. And now we're going to do a block of it. And this is where, once again, this is put, puts the double in double check lock. We check again if the instance is equal to null. And if it is, that's when we create a new one. So we do instance equals new double check lock, just like that. And then at the end here is where we actually return the instance. So we do return instance. So now what this has basically done is it made it so only the minimum number of threads have to wait as only this block here is synchronized. And as previously it was this whole method. So on, this only happens for the first instance of using this method. So when the object is null, then we have to do all this. But if not, we just return the instance. So there's no need to have synchronized here for this whole method. So in other words, if the single instance of this class has been created, there's no need to use synchronized at all. And then there's no overhead. So it's more efficient. Now, real quick, let me just show you what it would be like to create an object of this. It's basically just the exact same deal. So I would just say create a main method in the double lock demo, uh, double check lock, double check lock, and then I would just say equals dot get instance, and there you go. So then you'd have that single object created again. All right, so now I'm going to get into one of the final ones for sing implementing Singleton in Java, and that is the Bill Pew Singleton implementation. And so basically what this comes from, it comes from the concept of a static inner class. So when in Singleton, when a class is, when the Singleton class is loaded, the inner class is not loaded, and thus it doesn't create an object when loading the class. So what this would look like is, of course, once again, we have to make our private constructor. So I'll call it Bill Pew, and I'll just do it like this. And then the next thing we're going to do is now we're going to create our private static inner class. So we'll do private static class. I'll just name it Bill Pew Inner, like this. And so now what I'm going to do is, of course, I'm going to create the actual instance of the Bill Pew class. I'm going to create that within here. So pr I'll do private static final Bill Pew, and then I'll just name it instance again equals new Bill Pew. And so because this is a static inner class, to actually call this from the outside, you would have to do bill pew or dot bill pew inner. And so the only way this object is called then again is we're going to be using the get instance. So this is still technically lazy instantiation. So I'll do public static bill pew and then get instance. And then, yep, get instance. And then this is where you use the, so you would return, because it's a static inner class, you do bill pew inner dot instance. And so this is when you would actually return this variable here. So you can see it's still lazy. And this is because the inner class is only created when the get instant, math, instant method is called. So this won't actually be created when you instantiate this class. It's only when you call this method. And so it's thread safe because when threads are accessing this get instance method, the object is already created. So second object will not be created. And so in a way, you could think that this looks like eager initialization because you are actually creating the new object when you are actually creating this variable. But because it is a private static inner class, this is not actually the case. And this is also the most widely used approach because it doesn't use synchronization. So of course, let me just show you real quick how to make so how to make a Bill Pew object using, or using the Bill Pew method. So I would just do Bill Pew like this equals and then Bill Pew dot get instance. So it's just the exact same as the other ones. And now the final singleton design pattern I want to go over is using an enum or an enumeration. So basically enum stands for enumeration and it's a special class that represents a group of constants. And usually the first line in this in an enum should be a list of the contents and then the other things like methods, variables, and a constructor. So basically it's like a class but it's a special class. And the way I can show you that an enum is basically like a class is say for example the way you declare it is you use the keyword enum. And say I do enum, say I just name it the same name as this class, so enum initialization. You can see it'll be highlighted in red, and that'll be because it's a duplicate class. So you can basically see that it's a class. So let me just rename this to, let's just call it initialization. So I'll do public enum initialization like this. And then, of course, like I said, in an enum, you usually do the constants. You declare the constants first. And so the constant for us is going to be the single instance of this enumeration. And so what we usually, what you usually call it is just instance, so instance like this. And what this is basically saying is 
it's the same as say up here we have public static final uh, enum initialization instance equals new enum initialization. So it's basically the same thing as saying this, this right here. Also, what's great about this too is it's a lot less code to write. For example, you can see we haven't even had to write a private constructor because enum basically means you have a private constructor already and also the instance keyword basically means that it's basically the same as the method uh, get instance. Let me show you more me some methods that I can make that can make this seem more clear. So let's do public void uh, set name just like this and then we'll do it takes a string name and then let's create another instance of this. Let's just call it string name. And then we can do this.name equals name. So you can see it really is like a class. And then it's just a special kind of class. And then we can do public void get name. And we can do, let's just print out to the console. Hi, I am object space and then plus name. Let's just do this.name just to be sure. Certain. And so then if I want to run this, let me just create a main method down here. And then if you want to create an instance of an enumeration, what you would just do is let's just call initialization equals initialization dot instance. And then we can do initialization dot set name. Let's give it the name Tom. And then we do initialization dot get name. So let's see what happens if we do this. So you get says, hi, I am object Tom. And now let's create a second instance of this. So let's do this. Let's name it initialization two. And so we've set the name to initialization to Tom, but right here, let's do two, and let's do set name, and let's do Greg. And so now if we run this again, you can see hi, I'm object Greg, even though we were calling initialization.getName, not initialization2.getName. And now let me just show you how we would call this from, an, from a different file. So we have right here, demo, and so let's just create the main method like this. And what we would do is new initialization.initialization. Let's just call it initialization again, equals this dot initialization dot instance. So this is how you call it. And then you can do the same methods that we did per previously. So set name, Tom, and things like this. And so the instance keyword, once again, is basically the same as get instance. And it has a private constructor. So you know that we can, by default, an enumeration has a private constructor. So we don't have to worry about an instance of it being created anywhere else. But so this is my video on Java singleton classes. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and just thank you for watching.